This is a critical moment where together we must urge Iraq's leaders to rise above sectarian motivations and form a government that is united in its determination to meet the needs and speak to the demands of all of their people. Secretary of State John Kerry in Iraq talking, in Egypt talking, and that a statement he made earlier today. But can a new government be formed in time to save every city outside of Baghdad? A critical primary runoff election Tuesday in Mississippi. Can the Republicans convince African-American voters that he is the best man for the job? Before we are all done, I have the suspicion we will all be audit targets of the IRS. Trust me. Welcome to the arena in this corner from the website politicalhype.com and our political strategist joining us in studio, Mariana Mancuso. Pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having me. Good Monday. You're welcome. <laughs> and in this corner, Democratic strategist Eric Sapp joins us once again. Eric, how are you? And welcome in. I'm doing great. Great to be back. Eric. All right. Here we go. Let's get things started. Eric, I'm going to give you the first shot this time. John Kerry in Egypt. Uh, he's talking to President Sisi. Uh, they are trying to get things together. They're trying to pass a little money back and forth here and there. Uh, is anything really being done, in your opinion, in Egypt? And what exactly is the Secretary of State hoping to accomplish? Well, he's getting the conversation started. I mean, uh, President Bush signed an agreement that would get our troops out of Iraq in 2011. We pulled our troops out, and now we have this issue that we have to deal with. We have we the Middle East matters to us, so we have to be doing the hard diplomatic work in an age-old problem that goes back millennia of the Sunni and Shiite divide, and that starts with talking. It starts with the hard work on the ground, getting both sides, coming to the table, doing what needs to be done. It's not easy. It's not simple. It's not black and white, but it's what we have to do. It's what's best for the region. All right, Mariana, I'm going to go ahead and play devil's advocate here. It would seem that the Secretary of State is doing exactly what he needs to do. He's got to make all these stops along the way because it's going to take quite some time, and you've got a lot of people that you have to appease along the way. Seems like doing the right thing. I think it's a fantastic press opportunity. That's exactly <laughs> what I think, absolutely. He's over there and he's shaking hands and he's having conversations, but I think that we're moving a little bit slow on the gun here. You know, this is something that needed to happen about a week ago to maybe help keep the violence down. You know, we've seen that this is now spreading over into Jordan and that's a problem. And so this is something that needed to be done way before. And I think it's important for the Obama administration to remember that President Obama, as is Secretary of State John Kerry, they were for this before, they were against it before they were for it. And so they have no idea which way they're coming or going. And they have to be very careful and they have to make sure that there's actually a well sought out plan and there really hasn't been anything thus far. Well, a well sought out plan is one thing. And I guess, Eric, I'll, I'll ask you to jump in any time you wish here. It almost seems as if though, while you say that it's going slow, things like this take time. You can't just throw soldiers at it immediately. You have to get permissions from the governments. There's still a lot of hoops that they've got to jump through here, correct? It took them exactly. two weeks to go over there. It took them two <laughs> weeks to make a decision that we're going to go over and have a conversation with these people. Maliki had been asked a while now, and we're just now getting around to it. I mean, that's unfortunate. That's fair. Well, I mean, that is fair. I, I think it's a, little, it's a little naive to assume that a trip over is the only thing that the U.S. can do. To think that this is the first conversation they've been having, we, we just know that's not true. I think it's this ignorant is for the a complicated president not issue. to issue a We do on this. have to be careful with it, and we can't just jump into this. Maliki is supported by Iran. I mean, we have two sides that this is a complicated issue. You don't just throw all your support. We haven't done one anything to this point, Eric. I think you can agree with that. We haven't done anything up until this point. We have just turned a blind eye and continued to done so. And now, when the president's feeling the heat, he's a, he's going over there, and I think he's going over there to save face and help his approval rating because that's in the tank. Well, the president has shown time and again, be it getting bin Laden, be it getting the perpetrators of Benghazi, he does the work right. Then why does the American time public right to, feel to that do he it right? Not... That's what he's doing here. This isn't about photo ops. If it had been about photo ops, they would have had someone there the first day this hit the headlines. Instead, they did the differ. phone calls and the back channels to get something useful when they went. That's what's best for America. Okay, beg to differ. Go ahead. I beg to differ. Currently, we're seeing right now <laughs> that, that the fair. American public has only believed that Obama can handle his, his approval rating for foreign policy is 37%. His approval rating overall for doing his job is, is 41%. The American public does not believe that Obama can lead our country, let alone lead the country on a world stage and actually help over on what's going on in the Middle East. And by sending John Kerry, he's merely doing that to save face and help the Middle East because if he doesn't do something soon, the Middle East is going to spill over into America and we're on the potential track for another 9-11 and you can't dispute well, that. Bush's approval rating when he led us into Iraq was through the roof. Oh, good. But they Let's didn't do the Bush job some right. more because that's this the only thing the Democrats can do right now. This president is focused on doing what's best for America and for our security and is counting on once we get the job done right, 
then America, then the American people will uh, will understand. And he's interested in doing it right, not in. Well, the okay, most Eric, I tell you what, I am going to do. I am I am going to be arbiter here a little bit because usually when it comes to these things, I always tell people in just about everything, let's not go backward. Let's let's continue to stay where we are and go forward, and let's not blame anybody from eight, nine, ten, twenty years ago. Let's stay right here for the moment. Your points are well made in that, but let's not go backward. Let's also bring this up that there are now reports coming out that ISIS and the consolidation of their power. They warn that these militants may not end their quest for power when they get to Baghdad. Some are saying when they get to Baghdad, not if. So isn't it really at this point where you need something a lot better than just talking? Because every single day, and again, I'm going to play that card for those people who say that there are villages going down, there are, uh, there are, uh, there's equipment that is being turned over to the militants right now and weaponry, that you got to move faster than this. It's to you, Eric. Well, you got to do it right. I mean, if, if we go in and prop up an Iranian um, dictatorship right now, but that's, that's not totally what supported by doing. Iran, that can have negative repercussions. If we go in and uh, support, you know, I try, try to get everything turned around and force that uh, the current government to fall, that's going to have repercussions. He doesn't want to do that, that either. Easy, we need an inclusive government. We need into a it. government that includes the Sunnis, the Shias, and the Kurds. Otherwise, you're not going to have a successful reign in Iraq. And you can't dispute that. You're right. We need all the powers together, which is exactly what Senator, what Secretary Kerry is doing. You're bringing these people together. They are creating dialogue. That's the only way we're going to fix this. This is an Iraqi problem. We can't bomb our way out of it, and we can't reinvade and put troops on the ground. That's not going to fix it either. We understand so all that. But dialogue let's, and but bringing people together. Let's go back again to, to what we're talking about here with dialogue, and I think it is, excuse me, fair to mention for everybody here. We've seen dialogue before. We've had dialogue before. So the American people are asking, why do we need more dialogue? And I'm just posing the question here from the people who want to know why it takes more dialogue and not take some real substantive action right now. Well, dialogue is action. In diplomacy, that's how you get things done. Americans don't want to put our troops back in there. They don't want to reinvade a country in the middle of a sectarian battle. And so our options are, do we rally our allies? Do we get the people that have interest on the ground there, supporting this issue, working towards a peace, working towards a government that's more representative? Or what, what are the other options? We, we got, you know, Republicans are big on the criticisms. They've got no solutions at all. They never have. And they, they I think sure that's a farce, Eric, yeah. and I think, I think that that's completely off base and unwarranted. Republicans have been asking for the administration to come to Congress with some type of plan, and so far the entire administration has continued to duck and weave the entire everything. Whenever you have top senators and Republican leaders coming and asking for a solution or some type of plan, because that's what, that's what the administration does. They come to Congress with a plan, Congress votes on it, and then we go through it. That's how our system works as a democracy. And they haven't done that. Instead, he sent John Kerry over there. He announced on Friday he was sending 300 troops to go over and, and make sure that the embassies are okay and work alongside Iraqi forces. But now he's not doing anything. He wants to talk about other issues that have no stake in what's going on in the Middle East. He's trying to pivot and keep everybody's, everybody paying attention to what's going on at home when ISIS is 70 miles outside of Baghdad. We have to so do something, gonna, and talks you, aren't going to help. Talks, we're over talks. Talks are so far re, beyond us plan. right now. And then you listed the things that he has said he is doing and is going to do. And then you said that's the, that that's not a full plan. If Republicans in Congress are naive enough to think that the president of the United States can map out the solution to Iraq over the next 24 months and give them I a think detailed it's naive plan that, that they the think they hasn't had a plan I mean, in that, place just, when we pulled out in 2011, Eric. That's completely naive for the administration no not to. to have had a plan. The problem is, is that the administration caught, got caught without having a plan when they needed one, and one should have been in place in 2011 when we left, and you can't deny that. The problem is, is there was nothing in place, and the administration is now like, whoops, what do we do? Well, the thing is, is that should have already been taken care of when we pulled out in 2011. Okay, I've only got about a minute left. I have to ask real quick here. I promised everybody we'd get to this, the IRS scandal that's going on. Eric, real quickly to you, about 20, 25 seconds. Can we not admit that somebody's covering up something here? This is getting a little ridiculous now. Well, there is no question that there were mistakes made with the IRS. They shouldn't have done this. But on the cover-up side, you know, they, they're working with computers that are from the 1990s. So when you have technology like that, things go bad. With that many people, you, stuff gets lost. The number of documents, you know, that 
Republicans have been looking for a cover up in a gazillion issues okay. forever, and they haven't found it. Okay, There's that's not yours. One Hang mistake, on one sec. One sec. Mariana, go ahead. 25 seconds. You can't lose emails, especially in today's society. I mean, that's that's absolutely absurd that you can't find your email and nothing nothing well, is there anymore. Technology when you're using 1990s technology, you can. That's the problem. No, well, you can't. We... Computers are forever. Anything you put onto a computer, <laughs> it stays there. Whether it's in a cloud or it's on a hard drive, you can pull it out. Trust me. I think and all you is... viewers know the stuff they have from the 90s is not there forever, and, and they can't find it. I've and got what a floppy disk right for 97, now? and I can still pull up my papers. Here so. we go, floppy disk and everything. <laughs> what is what is all is we are done right now. Mariana Mancuso, thank you so much. Thank Eric you. Sapp, thank you. For, sorry we ran out of thank time. You. We'll do this again. We have to do this at least for an entire hour sometime. I think you'd be perfect <laughs> for that as well. Uh, Eric, we'll have you back again. Mariana, thanks thank so much. You. We'll see you later on this week. Thank you. Stay with us. You too as well, because here on Midpoint, we question everything.